so the Super Falcons of Nigeria will have to wait for their 10th continental title. Of course, they lost to Morocco uh, in the second semi-final of the ongoing uh, Women's Africa Cup of Nations uh, in that uh, uh, North African country. Um, the Super Falcons, they gave their best, of course, uh, after two records, two key, two key players in that uh, uh, team. And so much to talk about as far as that is concerned around right? the wild drum, uh, the laser that, uh, that was being pointed to uh, the Super Falcons during the penalty shootout. So, so much to talk about as far as that is concerned. Welcome to Nigeria Super Fans Forum. My name is Ola Femi Ashalu. And again, as usual, we'll take a trip to Ghana where we'll be talking about uh, an ex international, uh, talking about um, uh, players not staying uh, too long away from sex. What we used to hear is the other way around that players are drawn to stay away from sex as long as they can, but he's saying no. And we'll be talking about that. And of course, we'll take a trip back to Nigeria, talking about the Nigerian professional football. Of course, the, the, the season just ended, uh, but for Kano Pillars, Kano Pillars, they are making headlines left, right, and center. Uh, according to reports, Kano Pillars will be approaching the Court of Sport for Arbitration uh, following their relegation. Remember that the LMC, the disciplinary committee of the LMC, decided to uh, deduct points from Kano Pillars, and of course, that subsequently got them uh, relegated. So much to talk about on the show. Trust is going to be as loaded as it is always. And we'll be talking about Ghana, Otoado, Chris Utin, and lots of other news coming uh, from Ghana. Kyle Gundari uh, is around. And um, like most of us, Kyle, I know you are still reeling from uh, what happened yesterday to uh, the Super Falcons of Nigeria. But let's talk about that. The girls uh, gave their best. It's, it's been a long time I saw a, a Nigerian national team uh, in that spirit, playing, for, uh, playing with nine men for a long period, for a long period and they still gave the out. Very penalties, it could have been any, anybody's game. But let's talk about uh, that game, Kyle. Femi, I think uh, for me, I, rather than be sad, I think I am very, very, very proud of the girls. As a matter of fact, I want to take back some of my comments <laughs> in previous editions that uh, <laughs> I still believe that there's a long way between Nigeria and the rest of Africa. Are you serious? Yes, Kyle? yes. That game actually showed it. Two, the two semifinals actually showed it. One, it showed how much Zambia have, uh, have, have progressed. It showed that for all we thought about South Africa, they are still just truthless bulldogs. Two, it showed that when the chips are down, that the Nigerian girls are still a, 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 a head and shoulders above every other team. Because for a team that could they are play with nine men for that long period of time, mm -hmm in such some will say controversial officiating although i do not, you know me i don't it's too rare, i don't talk course. about official of officials after the game i think they did excellently well when games go to penalties like my youth coach used to tell us way back then in the hood he would say once it comes to penalty god has left the two teams <laughs> <laughs> it is not left to you to you the players that at the point where it's, the, what that means is there are no favors again once it comes to penalties. That's what it means because uh, we, even though we ended the game with nine men, at the end of like, that, that quickly reminds me of something. Somebody asked me a question uh, why the game was about ending that now that we are finishing with nine men, wouldn't they have an advantage when it comes to penalties? I said no. By the FIFA rules of the laws of the game, once the games end with a team, having a lesser number of players on the pitch. The other yeah, team we're, 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 will be we're, instructed we're, to remove the two, the, two the, uh, the two or one or how many players, players that this that other team are yeah, losing so that there will be parity yeah, like, when you course. play penalties. Yeah. That's critical for, for our fans yeah, yeah, and for yeah. the guy who asked me why the game was about ending, that what would now happen? Would, they see, would, would, that, would that mean that they will play 11 <laughs> penalties and we have to play nine? nine? I said no. <laughs> that FIFA has in its wisdom taking care yeah. of that kind of mm -hmm. eventuality. So once it comes to penalties everything is even everybody is on the same level and to give as much as they give i am very very proud of the girls there are other factors why we lost mm. but for the girls they gave everything they could and i think i've, I've been vindicated by the showing of the girls Carole, uh, it seems after Ainde and uh, Rashida Yajiba they were recorded in that game it seems around the world drum so much to talk about that uh, american as far as the impact that he has made in this team is concerned. But since after those two key players, Ainde in the midfield, Rashida up front, since uh, after they were red carded, it seems Randy Waldrum was in no mass land. He didn't even know what to do. To be honest with me, 
it's not it wasn't about the game alone all through the competition and the world has not impressed me as a manager like i told you femi on and off camera he strikes me as somebody who doesn't know his team very well he doesn't know the skill set of each player he has been with the team for over a year a year or thereabout now and if you do not know your players by now femi you would never know them i have said on this program I've, it got to a point that i began to sound like a broken record some people thought I was pushing an agenda for Monday gift. But thank God, the we game, that you now saw game. everybody could see what I've been shouting about Monday gift. You didn't I've even seen, bring the, 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 the young lady I've on. I've seen Monday a, a gift director. play. I know the kind of person she is, the kind of player she is. She's a player more. Femi, today, I stand to be corrected. She's our best player. Not the biggest player. Not the high, most high profile. I don't want people to get it mixed up. Mm. But in terms of footballing at talent, that girl is the future of Nigerian football. And I've said this several, even on this program, that I don't understand why this girl will be on the bench. As a matter of fact, some people were watching with me while the game was going on. I told them the same thing. One of them now observed that a journalist. He said, eh, maybe the girl is young. I said, no, if you are young enough to be in the team, you are young enough to be, you are you, good enough, you are to, good enough to play. Mm -hmm. If you are young enough to be in the team, you are good enough to play. And luckily, when she came here, although I thought she, she would have been introduced earlier than she was. And they followed the like same pattern. Us, because where we watched it, of course, it was the same thing. It followed the same pattern that you bring this girl in two minutes, three minutes, and you expect her to make it. See, if you had brought in Messi at the time you, bring, you, you brought him Monday gave, he, should, he would have struggled because the game was like against us, two man down, and everything was just going up. But still yet, if you, are calling, if you are talking about the players who stood out for you, you will still mention that girl. Look at that chance. Look at the that chance. chance that look at the, won the game. That would have won the for game for Nigeria. Us. And look at, the, for somebody that said it's too young, look at the calmness with which she took a penalty. Maybe we'll see more of her in the third place because, of course, Rashida Ajibade is out now in the third place. Well, maybe. Maybe. I, but it's so unfortunate that we have to wait until the losers final. Yeah, see, even if we had qualified to the final. I'm not, sh I'm not certain that South Africa will not be us again because Randy Wadrum, as far as I'm concerned, has not brought anything all the way from US to this. At state. all, at all. Yeah. No, Femi, you see, sometimes you look at the man, you don't look at the contest. Ask yourself, a coach is as good as his pedigree. That's what you look, consider when you are employing a coach. Either his pedigree or his potential, the two piece. It's either what he has done or what you think he can do. When Chelsea went for Mourinho, they went for the two teams. They saw that he had the pedigree. He had just won the, the cup with uh, the Champions League, uh, with, Champions League with Porto. And they saw a huge potential when they brought him. I did, he did not disappoint. Mm -hmm. Now, those two are not present with Wardrum. <laughs> no, seriously. He's a university coach. Not, what has he even achieved? What has he achieved? He, he hasn't coached in Africa before. You are bringing him into a set of totally different circumstances. Now you brought him in. We have... And, at 65, I do not think he's too old, but the age of his ideas is just too old for me. It's not about his own age, but the age of his ideas. How the NFL is getting this message? At the age of his ideas, because it showed for me, I don't have a, a coaching certificate yet, but everything I said came to pass in that game. I said, at the point where we were two men down, all you needed to do is, we had only nine outfit, uh, eight outfield players, players. meant the, the four-man defense, turn it into a three-man defense. Bring out an uh, AB because AB, AB is prone to mistakes. Push her into the middle, form a, a, a four man uh, midfield because uh, Ainde is out. We, by the way, is our most influential player in the middle. Then you're not bringing the game on the gift. Throw her up front. Everything towards her. Let her keep the Moroccans occupied because the moment she is on the two central defenders, those will be two less players for the Moroccans to play with. This is common sense for me. It is common sense. I said this. I went to. I, I I wrote about it on Facebook. And you know what? This is what it is. I do not. I will not do teach think, anybody to do, do this job. Do you think NFL should should leave Wardrop for the for the World Cup next year? Femi, you know the problem with sacking and hiring coaches is whoever is brought in, we are not sure what we are going to get in. Kind of why I said so is this is what we get at the continental level, where the competition is not as. Where the quality of the competition is not as high, is not as high as I, when you get Femi, to the I worst. I agree with you. When you get to the worst, you will play the, the likes of France, England, Femi, Norway, Austria. Let me, At least we are seeing Euro 2020 is going on. Let me say something. In World Drums defense, uh, you have to look at the NFF. If you want top quality coaching. So you want to blame NFF for this? Yes, if you want top quality coaching, you pay for it. The Moroccan coach used to coach Olympic Lyon. 
the, the European champions. To, what, what has he done after the entire day? He's not coach of Morocco. They are in the more is the semi final in the finals. They have saying. never been in the finals. Since he left Lyon. What else has he achieved? He, he has been. He is now their coach, and they are taking them to the final of the Afcon. They have never been there. So in the history of Moroccan football, their women are in the finals of the Afcon, and the the, the, not, the name of the coach who are taking them is this young man. I I remember you talk about his age. Okay, yeah. It's not about his age now. It's about what he's able to do. Pedigree and potential, don't forget. So for me, I think the NFF should be able to pay good money, even for the, for the Super Eagles too. You cannot go and bring a, 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 a Pesero or, 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 or whatever, and you think you want him to rub shoulders with, with, with uh, those who, 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 who earn 200 times his salary. <laughs> no, it will not work. Pay top money if you want, if you want top performances from, from the manager. And you cannot expect much more than what, what these people are giving. Maybe after this tournament, maybe the NFF can decide to go and bring Jose Mourinho to coach uh, <laughs> the Super Falcons. But Kaede, let's talk about uh, what incident we saw yesterday, okay. the least thing. We saw that in uh, the playoff between Senegal and uh, Egypt for the 2022 FIFA World Cup playoff. Yeah. Now, we saw it again yesterday. We saw Moroccan fans pointing this thing at the faces of the Super mm -hmm. Falcons, even the goalkeepers. Yeah. The North Africans keep getting away with a lot of issues, Kyle. Yeah. I think Cavs should have seen ahead that stuff like this could possibly have happened. And tell perhaps the, the Moroccan FA or even the organizers, tell your fans, don't bring this thing to the stadium. I do not agree that they should tell the Moroccans what they should do at the beginning of this competition, knowing fully well that this competition is staged in North Africa. And the North Africans have a penchant for this, is to say strobe lights, laser will not be allowed in the stadium. If it is found out that it's, for whatever reason it is in the stadium when match, matches are played, you're, you are going to pay heavily for it. They will not leave that for all the teams. They are not that, in that way, they are not targeting any particular Because country. we saw what uh, FIFA did to Senegal. That's to what Senegal. I'm saying. They paid now, heavily for that. It is the inconsistency of CAF for me that is killing. You said when the, when the Egyptians did it to, to Senegal, you said, no, uh, Senegal complained. You said, no, it's the mm -hmm. way of life, life in North Africa. But then the Senegalese Senegal now did it. Retaliated. And you know the thing with us West Africans, when we want to pay you, we pay you double. <laughs> I'm very sure if Nigerians are going to do the same to Morocco, if they come to Morocco, <laughs> in fact, they will bring a whole Mercury life. <laughs> at the point that the player, you know, we tend to overdo our own thing. Mm. Now, I expect Kraft to make a statement. One. Then two, I expect the Nigerians, without being crybabies, to also make a formal report, not because of what has gone, because we cannot change the outcome of the game. It's gone. But to serve notice in future so that this do not happen again. Because I expected them to have learned from the Senegalese uh, experience. If the act if actions were taken against Morocco or Egypt, Senegal would not do what they did. Mm -hmm. And then when Senegal now did their own, you punished Senegal. You promptly. You punished Senegal, mm -hmm. you left Egypt, who did the first offenders. Mm -hmm. Now it shows that you favor that. one team against the other. That's what it shows. Okay, Kaudi, let's talk about officiating. Uh, the Super Falcons, like you said, we don't want to be crying babies. Yes. Uh, but it was a big controversial for some people, actually. But let's look at uh, the four semifinals, Zambia and South Africa. A lot of people are saying it seems they just wanted South Africa to uh, get into the final. Because that penalty at that time, is not even the timing of the penalty. Was it really a penalty? Because, of course, with VAR, VAR came into the tournament to, to, to aid the referee's decision. But we saw that, I don't know, Kyle uh, there was nowhere in the world that ball would have been a penalty. No, number one, I, th I am happy you corrected yourself that it's not about the, the timing. timing. Yeah, of it was the, about the decision. Yes, it is about the decision, not the timing. So for me, I think what we should be looking at is uh, are those decisions all over the pitch. One, you know, there was a first penalty call that VAR reversed. reversed. That in itself was not even... I didn't need VAR to tell me that it wasn't a penalty. But kudos to the referee that saw, that listened to Wiser uh, Council and decided to retract that penalty. Then the second one, even if there was a foul for me, that was on the border on like the on the edge. It by no means that the the, go, that the player tumbled into the penalty box does not mean it should automatically be a penalty. There, these are things that when you shout uh, one VR, one VR, you should also look at the human factor. At the end of the day, it is humans that, that, will, that, that will take the decisions. Not the, what the VR can do is to tell you, you know what, this is what my my observation. Is. It is still the human beings that will take the decisions. And unfortunately, as good as this competition has been, it is being mad by this questionable uh, officiating at this level. Mm. For the Nigerian game, 
I, you know me, Femi, I do not like crying wolves when there, mm -hmm. there's none. The two penalties were just, uh, the two for free, uh, red cards, sorry, were good cause. Mm. Very good cause, in my opinion. Yeah, some people have said, eh, why would you give two penalties? I say you can give as much as four, five. And as a matter of fact, if you have more than four players red carded, you will automatically end the game. <laughs> yeah, if you have five players red carded, it is allowed you can red card as many as the entire team. Mm. But if you have more than four players, that's five. That means six people cannot continue the game. You have to automatically end the game. Mm. So it is allowed by FIFA. So I do not have a, a, a problem with the number of, of red cards. I do not have a number with the cause themselves. But then there were some decisions other than the red cards that me I have focused on. That the, maybe the, the referee, after seeing the game again, would have taken a, a second look at. Okay, uh, Kyrie, you, you, you talked about the Super Falcons. You meant if we had a better coach, we would have possibly won that game because even the Moroccans could not be able to take advantage of our, of our mean, two red cards. I will, st I will maintain this stand until the end of time that if we had a better man as head of the uh, coaching crew uh, in that game, we would have won that game. Because it showed that the Moroccans respected us. I think we unduly criticized, the, although they deserved the criticism, the, the Super Falcons, and I am happy that they lost their first game to South Africa. That has sort of given them a, a, a jab in the arm that they have been steadily improving from game to game. And the game against Morocco was easily their best game. Femi, if you watch that game, you will be proud. At the point, the guy that was with me was like, uh, are you sure these are ladies? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. See, look at the intelligent way they were playing. Hmm. So that means that the Nigerians, whenever their backs are to the world, to the wall, you know that they will always react and no, not in a very funny way. So if we had a coach who can like tap into the into the fear of the Moroccans, because they, they have enough respect, enormous respect, respect for us. Another thing would have taken us apart, killed us totally. Hmm. That game had no business going into extra time. But hey, it is who he is. What can we do? Okay, and uh, let's talk about um, the, the intercontinental playoff that was organized in this competition. So Cameroon and Senegal, of course, they picked the two slots. Of course, they'll be taking place in the intercontinental competition that will be, of course, organized by FIFA because FIFA has expanded the number of teams that will be playing at the next year's tournament. Uh, that will be hosted by Australia and New Zealand to 32 from 24. So we wish Senegal and Cameroon the best. They're going to play. <laughs> uh, and to correct an impression, I saw a, I saw a, a, a news report online that okay. uh, Senegal and Cameroon have qualified for the World Cup. No. They, they have qualified for the intercontinental, intercontinental playoffs. playoffs, which, of course, it is in tournament style, yes, a yes. form. They will go there and play with, I think, nine other countries yeah. to, to pick the three available slots. Yeah. So if we wish them all the, all best, the best, but they have not qualified for the World mm -hmm. Cup yet. Mm -hmm. It is the world that, that they have, uh, that they have is, qualified is, for. It's just the playoffs. So let's really go on this break. We're about to talk about what is happening in Nigeria. Remember we told you that the 2021-2022 uh, MPFL season has ended, but Kano Pillars are in the news. Of course, uh, news reaching us uh, says that uh, they have reached an agreement. Of course, it's not confirmed, but says that they have reached an agreement with a Gombe state-based football team, Doma United, to buy uh, their tickets. Of course, Doma United just got promoted to the uh, MPFL from NNL. Uh, but we're about to talk about that. Is that really possible in Nigerian football? And Kano Pillars said they, they are ready to push this matter to cast regarding the point deduction by the LMC. We'll be back to talk about that. Please stay with us. Welcome back, and it's still not just my fans from, of course, your best football show uh, in Africa. Remember, we talk about everything football in the continent. Kaude, let's come to uh, the MPFL, and congratulations to your team. You escaped uh, relegation by Whiskers. You lost to Kano Pillars, uh, but, of course, Pillars got relegated uh, because Katina United, I think, I think they, they did the job for you. They, they won, but eventually. But Katina United, excuse me, Katina United, Kano Pillars... Tell me, which Arsenal. team do you support? Me? You. I support the Rivers United. No, it's a lie. You are a thief. Which team do you support? <laughs> I support Rivers United. It's a lie. <laughs> tell, I love Stanley Guma. I, I love Stanley Tell Guma. the viewers which team you support. <laughs> I don't support Cry United. But of course, uh, my team own didn't it get now. Own it. But my team didn't get relegated. Who, who, we were not even close to being relegated. Who are, who are Cry United in Nigerian but, football? But, you are talking about but, but shooting we, stars. We better than the, shooting stars. This, uh, this, this, this season, the, we are talking about the, 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 the biggest team in, in Nigerian it, football. It's either the... the the missile from Russia or Ukraine, if shut down the, the stars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about um, 
uh, canopy lands. Of course, they're relegated with uh, Katina United, Heartland, and MFM. Very sad incident. But let's talk about pillars particularly. This news said that they've reached an agreement with Doma United, though it has not been confirmed that they're going to buy the slot in the coming season so that they can return to the MPFL. Mm. And also the fact that they are planning to approach cars over the pond in Shakaradi. Quickly, what do you have to say? Yeah, I think they are just aging their bet. The most, uh, what do you call it, for them is to buy the slot. I'm not, I don't see that reverse are coming. So that's what they want to do. Is it possible? It, yeah, it is. They can buy? Yeah, they can. It is done in Nigerian football. All you, all you, all you need to do is just the, the paperwork. Automatically, what will appear in, in the NFF, the uh, LMC, with Duma, no, will be Duma, but then they will now apply for a change of all their names and everything back to Canopillas. That's what they will do. In the books of the LMC, Canopillas will be relegated at the end of this season, but then if they take over the, the slot, by Doma, it, United. by Doma United, Doma United, they will just change. It's just a change, uh, paperwork. Once they do the paperwork, they pay the LM, LMC. That's transfer. Yeah, they pay the <laughs> LMC and they pay uh, Doma United assembly. Uh, that, that's what they do. It's been done. This is not about Carlo Pilas alone. It's been done in Nigerian football for years. It is done. But is it, is it ethically right? Is it, is it is it for a team that is having a punishment? And yeah, it, uh, see the fact that they are going to pay to if, get that slot. If, if, if Doma cannot finance their activity in the it, it's different it's a different thing currently. well you cannot prove that they can't finance it one then two if their punishment had not been because of fans on ruliness and uh, whatever if it had been about match fixing i would say we should kick against them coming back that quickly hmm. for me hmm. but this is not it hasn't nothing it has nothing to do with all of that shady on the hand dealing so for this if they are able to afford it why not let them come back? Because whether you like it or not, they are one of the biggest teams in the league. Mm -hmm. They had color to the league anyway. They, I think they are one of the most supported teams in the, also in the country. The yeah, they do. You have to take one with the other. <laughs> okay, let's talk <laughs> about a report that they were put uh, cast over the decision of the LMC Disciplinary Committee. Uh, the point deduction that got them. They are free to do that, Femi, but I do not see anything coming out of it. They are free to do that. Is it possible for cast to even relegate to re relegate them the more? <laughs> because I think it's too no, really. No, a cars will only deal with what they have asked for, which is a reversal of that uh, point. Points. But then the rules are clear. If you do this, more so where there, there's a problem is the suspend. See, it's even easier to reverse the first three points deduction than the and suspended. Seven, uh, the, 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 the second three points because mm -hmm. that one was implicit in the first. Of course. So without the first, you couldn't have had the second. second. So it would be easier for them. If I were their uh, legal uh, officer, I would be looking for that reverser, not the second, the second one. one. Hey, uh, it's it already done. Let me not put ideas in their head. <laughs> okay, <Karen. laughs> uh, Let's talk about, last week we talked about uh, the uh, Ogun State FA Cup yes. between Remo Stars and Ijebu United. The, the obvious, I don't know, I don't want to say stupidity of the of the two sides but now the secretary of Remo stars i'm talking about michael nicote is coming out to say that uh, it wasn't a match fixing that the players that both players particularly their own players Remo stars players now were protesting bad referee uh, in, in in that game Kyle, they, and that's not justifiable and that's why they play he said they did not want to play the penalty shootout that's game. why they played the penalty he, 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 he said maybe i should do some of the things he said he said um, just before the end of the normal time, the match officials ended the match without the additional time and before the end of the 90 minutes, so the game could end in penalties. We opted not to play the penalties, but the Ogun State FA insisted if we played or, or he said he insisted we played or risk being banned. Kyle, Tell me who is in charge of keeping time to determine when the game has ended? Said journali journalists, what journalists who tag the video as a match fixing are unprofessional. Yes, they are. Thank you. But what I am saying is, Femi, who decides when the time is up or when he needs to add additional time? I think, you know why he's saying all of this? Because it takes time to punish infractions. If you are taking your decision within 48 hours of that video coming to life, all of this will not be necessary. So... Why does it even take us this long to even, to even punish? That's why I blame, I blame the NFF. Kade, let's take a trip to Ghana. Okay. Um, Ex-international, I'm talking about Mohamed Kago. He's urging players. Gago? Yeah. Mimo? Yeah. Wow. I like he's, him. He's urging players not I to stay. I, I used to run around with him in Ghana. Oh, in Accra. really? Yeah. Mimo. Big player. Very big player. I'm sure you will love what he said. Okay. He said players should not stay away for too long from sex. Uh, what I've heard all my life, 
as whether as, as a sport journalist or as a human being is footballers and sex do not mix they are like water. You, you know if what? you do you regularly, you know, it tells on the coming picture. Coming from from coming from Mimo, that's his nickname by the way. Okay. And Mimo, uh, Mohamed Gago. Coming from him, I'm not surprised. He used to be a playboy when he played football. He was a very, very flamboyant character. The girls loved him. The guys also loved him because he, he talks a good game and he plays a good game. You, you see him put his all in a game. And for me, if he says that, I'll trust <laughs> <laughs> I'll believe. I was waiting for. I was I waiting for that. I was waiting for that. Moment. I know. I, you are back home now. Then you, you don't know. I, you, are, I know you, are, you. you are back home. Yes. Now. I, I. If he says it, you know one thing. They say if a if, if a military man tells you this is how war mm -hmm. is, you have to believe him, whether he's lying because you have not been to war. Mm -hmm. This is a player who is a professional. He played under seventeen. I think it was in 1991 under seventeen squad. He played under under twenty under twenty in 1993 for them. Mm -hmm. He was around the national team for a long, long time. And he played in Italy. I think he played in Udinese and some other clubs like that. Top teams, actually. He played in Germany, too. So he is a top player. He was a top player and he's a top gentleman. So for me, if he says that, I believe him. You believe him? Yeah, I believe okay. him. Let me, let me read what he said, okay. particularly about Stephen Appiah. Okay. He said, it isn't normal for footballers to abstain from sex for a long period. I remember when Steven Appiah was coming to Udinese, mm -hmm. like you said. Okay. The first thing I told him is that he should marry his then girlfriend after a year so that we can send the lady an invitation to Italy immediately. That's what we did. And, it, and it, it, Steven it Appiah did well there. So, <laughs> so you yeah, are saying it's correct. It is, it is. But it, he was actually saying that it is better to, to be married I think than that, yes, yeah, from, from where I hear, it, it helps your it focus. Is, yeah. It helps the focus. I, yeah, I, with the benefit of insight, I will take whatever this guy says because they've been there, they've done it, they've seen it all. So I will take whatever Mimo says about this. Okay, let's just stay with Ghana. Chris Hutton told the son in an interview that uh, Otoado is responsible for the, picking the players and also additional tactics in games. This was almost the same thing that happened between uh, Augustin Gavoy and Emmanuel Muneke during the playoff. You, you get because Emmanuel Muneke later came out to say, ah, Gavon does his thing. You understand? Chris Hutton said, I only give advice when, when needed. But he said, when it, when it comes to player selection and the, the tactics used in games, Otoado is responsible. Then what is your job? No, Femi, I want, to, I want to put this in context. What brought about that revelation? Is there trouble in paradise? Perhaps. Because don't forget that Hutton has not eaten his, his desire to, to coach to, to the, get that job to get the job in a full-time capacity yeah. so if he's coming out to say this unprovoked that's why i'm asking for context now that is there is there a backstory that we we are not aware of if there is none then there's enough reason for the gfa to quickly step in and ask what the problem is because you don't just see a wife come out and say ah, ah it's my wife it's my husband that goes to the market to buy uh, yamu if a wife comes out, Femi, the day a woman comes out to say that, there's trouble. Maybe she's just saying the husband is a very hard-working person. No, a woman will not he won't say that. If, if a woman wants to cover your nakedness, it, she doesn't need to say that. You understand? But if a woman wants to show you for what you are worth to the whole <laughs> world, there's a way she will say it that without even saying it in a slide where people will, will get the message. So for me, the, NF, the GFA should look at this and ask questions. We do not want distractions towards the World Cup. Anything that could cause potential distractions, they should nip it in the board now. Right now. Right now. Call the two of them to a meeting and ask what is the... They, and you know, you remember one thing we talked about this, their uh, two-man two, two -man team, mm -hmm. that what are their different job descriptions? That was why I said Imana Muneke and... Uh, yes, if one person is coming out to say, ah, my own is to advise when needed. What if... What is your input? What is why, your are input? why are you there? You could as well be in, your, in, in England and be giving your advice. You don't need to be there if all you do is just give advice when needed. You do not have a say. And as a technical advisor, I think it should be much more involved in the technical side of things. Let me read what you said, Karade. He said, okay. one thing we are very clear on is that he, Otoado, is head coach. He's someone I was aware of as a player and he has a good pedigree. Otto is a very good coach. He wouldn't, if Otto is not a very, he wouldn't be employed by Borussia Dortmund if he was not. He's responsible for picking the players, picking the team. And the tactics. He told the son. Tactics and team. Yeah. So what is left for him? Just a down look. Femi, I think there's more. Let's let's hold our peace for now. 
let's not blow this out of proportion. Mm. But I believe there's more to this than we are hearing already. And they, sorry to say, there are conflict of interest kind of because I, we learned that the GFA wanted Chris Houghton while the president they wanted Otoado. Now they are being forced into a marriage which obviously has cracks now because for me honestly i believe there are cracks but like i said i don't want to, us to blow this thing out of proportion yet let's wait and see whether there's trouble in paradise or not hmm. is the honeymoon over <laughs> between the two because these are they have not even started any, at all the the end game was to be to be the world cup we have not gotten to the world cup we've not even started the the, tra the base camp mm. they've not started training they've not started player selection mm. and if he says this guy is in charge of player selection and tactics that means all the players that will be invited to camp for the world cup will be at the discretion of and Otto if you Ado. notice he's been very silent he really talks about the, the i understand that part for me you could be the silent partner in a, in a relationship the way I'm always silent for you. So <laughs> everybody knows I'm the silent guy. Yeah, my guy, the top. Uh, everybody knows I'm the silent guy. This was just a big guy. <laughs> so, but for me, for me, it could be the silent type. But then, you see, must be forceful in the discharge of his duty, or else he owes everybody, including himself, the duty to just walk away from that job. Okay, Kaudi, let's talk about match fixing in Ghana. We are still staying in Ghana. Okay. Remember, we've had a lot of issues. Inter-allies, uh, Ash Ashanti Gold, of course, their, their case has been uh, discarded now, relegated both of them. But Dream FC coach Ignatius Fosu is now coming out to say that it is only small minds who believe that there is match fixing in the Ghana Premier League, Kaudi. Eh, A eh. league where the GFA has taken handy steps. That's they went as far as... Promising or putting 20,000 cities oh, on the oh, table oh, in order Femi, to... Femi, to... Uh, no, I think I get the, man, I get the, the gentleman. Sometimes we, are so, we, we so get caught up in certain attitudes and vices that we do not, we do not see them as vices anymore. <laughs> no, seriously. You see it as a way of life. I, we see it as a, way of, as a normal thing that uh, they, they do and now. It's done everywhere. So we do not see it as something that is wrong anymore. So probably that's what he's talking about. Maybe this is what he has always seen in Ghana football, in Nigerian football, in African football, so that it has become a part of the furniture. That you do not see it as something wrong again. Because there's no way anybody will tell me that in Ghana, where it has been proven two teams have just been relegated this season, <laughs> with facts. <laughs> after uh, after, after painstaking investigation, you now say you do need that. There's no... Uh, we are, so okay, much we agree we are small-minded. Yeah, we are. He told uh, uh, Kumasi-based FM, I'm talking about Pure FM, he said, I always say that only small-minded small people, yeah, we, we say that there is, match, there is fixing of matches going on in the league because as far as I'm concerned, there is no match fixing in the Ghana Premier League. We agree, we are small-minded for me. Case closed. Next. Kyle, let's talk about uh, um, uh, Jose Pesero now. Uh, he's been talking about uh, Nigeria's failure to qualify for the 2022 World Cup and he said Ghana qualified by accident. So the impression is creating that maybe because of the two games, the two results is, is got already in the 2024 AFCON playoff. He's saying that if you were around, the Black Stars would not have got the better of the Super League. But then and the Black Stars are now in the same category with Saltame and Principe. And Serie alone too. That so, is a low blow card. No, it's not. It's a fact. He should, he should just move on. He should not allow Ghana to, to live rent free in his head. Ghana is not the is not is not the, the fine Ghana may be uh, how do I say the, this um, vicariously responsible for his employment because if we hadn't lost to Ghana maybe he wouldn't he have been employed. Have been, yeah. But then you should just stay off Ghana's case. He's not going to play Ghana anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So why is he obsessed with Ghana? Let him. We have moved on from Ghana. We have lost the ticket. Ghana have won squarely. I must say there's no accident. You had equal opportunities. To win. It ended 1-1 now. Yeah. Aggregate. Why didn't we score in Ghana? If we had scored in Ghana, if we get 1-1 had been in Ghana and we play 0-0, it would be true to the World Cup. So for me, I don't want all this uh, back talk that would look like we are belly aching. No. <laughs> Let's just move on. We've lost the World Cup ticket. We've lost it like months ago. By now, I'm even shocked that anybody's even talking about that, uh, apart from in passing reference. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be talking about that. Why is he so obsessed with Ghana? And he's, he's very boastful about where Super Eagles players play. He said, I have a team with players who play in England, Italy, oh. France, Spain. 
But unfortunately, they didn't beat Ghana to, to go to the World Cup. He said, but I think it was an accident. I think Nigeria is better than Ghana. Okay, you know what I would suggest? Let's go back to the 1950s. There used to be what they call the Jalco Cup between Nigeria and Ghana. It is played annually, home and away mm -hmm. basis. Let the NFA, NFF and the GF, GFA start again. So that we play at least twice a, more, a, a year <laughs> in or out of competition. Mm -hmm. We know that. We, we, we elevate it. We look for sponsors in both countries. Where do we put that in the, in the FIFA calendar? We just look for a, one of the FIFA windows. <laughs> it's, it's a good high profile for international friendly for me. We can do it, and God, uh, I said, God, FIFA has made it easy now. We can play it over two, uh, the two legs over five days or four days during the FIFA window. Mm -hmm. Just know that the Jal we just call it the Jalco Cup or no, whatever. And I think I already have uh, uh, potential sponsors in mind as I speak now. MTN does business in Ghana and Nigeria. Of course. Glow does business in Nigeria and Ghana. UBA does. Access Bank. They are, these, are, these are brands. That could take this. I think the, the GFA and this the brand, NFA. should bring advert to. Uh, <laughs> the no, no, they are, they all do business in of both course, Ghana and Nigeria. Course. They should be able to 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 stamp up the, the the money for the for the sponsorship and let's see how it goes. It will be a big game. Ensure that both teams parade their best players. In mm. fact, insist that for this to qualify for for you to qualify for sponsorship money, you must bring your, your, your a, 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 a team. A, a, yeah. Insist that the two teams bring their eight teams over two legs every year. You want to you want to bring back the Jollof? No, World. no, it's not the Jollof. For me, it will it will help keep this uh, Ghana is better than Nigeria, Nigeria is better than Ghana debate to rest. Because at least for one year, you will know that we are the reigning uh, winner of this cup. What by whatever name it used to be the Jalco Cup in the 1950s. Yeah. Just find a name for it now. Jalco Cup rebirth or reborn. <laughs> Whatever you can call it, glow intercontinent. Inter yeah, we have a, a, a title sponsor. Yeah, you, you can call it the name of any or any of the uh, potential sponsors that I have mentioned. Now, those who do business in Nigeria, they I guess Ghana, Jaco back there used to be the sponsor. Yes, they shouldn't be taking our monies alone. They should be putting back, and there's no better way to put back in both countries than to sponsor. I think this is a very good proposal. Yeah, Gaudi, you just gave. I think it will even help some of our, maybe some of our viewers in Ghana to even come to Nigeria and even maybe be in the studio. Yes, with us. yes. I think, I think we should take this proposal. Yeah, we, it's, it's a good one. It's you a can good see one. that Gadi is a genius. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I hope these brands that is mentioned are watching. So yes. it's an opportunity for them to yes, catch it. Yes, it is. It is. It is as we round up, let's come back home now. Let's talk about the, the Super Falcons. Unfortunately, it ended for them. Their dream of chasing the 10th title. But they have a third place game against Zambia uh, coming up on Friday. Kyle, what do you expect from this man called Randrop now? Because of course, obviously, it's two players, two key players as a Randrop. I'm sure maybe he doesn't even realize that these two players are the heart of his team, apart from Monday Give. What do you think he will do? Do you no. think Monday, Monday, Monday Give will stand in that game? It's ordinary, it should, she should. But you see, one person that I revered so much, the late Stephen Keshi said, this game, the top place final, is the loser's final. It's the final that nobody wants to play. Hmm. So I hope the players have enough strength to, to, to rise to the occasion to play because they have played a draining 120 minutes with nine men, Femi. Even if they had finished with two, eight, nine, 11 men. Thank God, they still have a few days to even recover. It, no, if they had won, the push would be there. But when you play 120 minutes with nine men and you now yeah. lose, the, press, the, the, the mind is crushed, the, the spirit is crushed. So I hope they find the strength to come back and play this. Because the last time they played in a loser's final, they lost. Hmm. The first and only time they played in a loser's final, they lost. So it's always difficult to, to, to bring yourself to come and play. When you are like when you even know your pedigree in the competition. Exactly. So hopefully they will do it. Hopefully not. But I, I am glad in a way that we're going to see a new name. On that, on, on, that, that on that on that tie to as African champions, mm -hmm. it's good. The monotone, it's becoming monotonous every time Nigeria, Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, it is. Kyle, thank you for coming through. On Always the show a pleasure. Audience. And honestly, I can't even tell you what I wish the Super Falcons because I I do not. If you really ask me, I do not want Radio Wadom to take that uh, team to the next year World Cup because I wouldn't expect any to to make any changes. And to you, our viewers, you know, you are the reason why we are here. And thank you for keeping uh, your comments coming. Don't forget, as usual, indicate where you are reaching us from. What do you think about uh, the two semi-final, the two semi-final matches in the ongoing uh, 2022 uh, Africa uh, Women's Cup of Nations in Morocco? What do you think, particularly the South Africa and Zambia? I know most of you saw the game because people in Zambia, 
if they see that referee in Zambia, the referee will, <laughs> they will do justice to that referee. What do you think? And don't forget to click on that subscribe button, share our videos, and like we always say, in your country, if there is a, 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 a your league football in your country, and you think some things are not done rightly, please bring it to our attention. We give you, we give it the attention that is due. Remember that this is where we talk about everything uh, regarding football in the continent. Until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now. I remain Olua Femi Ashaolu. Thank you.